Hello students, under the topic canonical forms, we are going to learn how to transform a first order linear partial differential equation into canonical form. So step 1. First of all, we have to compare the given partial differential equation with the standard PDE. That is, the standard PDE is given by AUXX plus B U X Y plus C U Y Y plus D U X plus E U Y plus F U is equals capital G. The step 2 is we have to find the discriminant value. From this given partial differential equation, we have to obtain the values of A, B, C, D, E, F and G. And now we have to find the discriminant value b squared minus 4ac and classify the given PDE as follows. If the discriminant value is greater than 0, then the partial differential equation will be of hyperbolic type. If it is equals 0, then it will be of parabolic type. And if the value of b squared minus 4ac is lesser than 0, then it will be of elliptic type. The next step will be to find the characteristic equations. So as for the classifications, the characteristic equations differ. So for hyperbolic, it will be a different one for parabolic and elliptic as well. So if the given partial differential equation is of hyperbolic type, then the characteristic equation will be given by dy by dx is equals minus b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and the other characteristic equation will be given by dy by dx equals minus b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and if the partial differential equation is of parabolic type then its characteristic equation is given by dy by dx equals b by 2a. If it is of elliptic type, then the characteristic equations are given by b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a and b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a both equals dy by dx. So these are the characteristic equations. So after classifying the partial differential equation and Finding that whether it is hyperbolic, parabolic or elliptic, we have to find the characteristic equations of the given PDE. And then the next step is to integrate the characteristic equations. So the characteristic equations that we obtain in step 3 will be integrated to obtain the solutions xi and eta. So the xi of x, y will be taken as c1 and eta of x, y will be taken as C2 and then it again it depends upon hyperbolic, parabolic and elliptic types. So if it is of parabolic type then the uh, solution will be xi of x comma y equals C1 and eta will be chosen such that it is not parallel to the xi coordinate and eta is chosen such that the Jacobian of the transformation is not zero. This concept I will explain you in detail by solving a problem of the parabolic type. The next will be elliptic. In elliptic, after finding the transformation uh, xi and eta, there will be a second transformation. So that transformation is given by alpha equals z, xi plus eta by 2 and beta equals xi minus eta by 2i. So after making this transformation, next we have the step 5. The transformed canonical equation is given by a bar u xi xi plus b bar u xi eta plus c bar u eta eta plus d bar u xi plus e bar u eta plus f bar u is equals g bar where the values of a bar, b bar, c bar, d bar and e bar and f bar and g bar are given here. So using this we have to find these values and then substitute those values in this equation in order to obtain the transformed canonical equation.
So this is how we have to transform a given PDE into canonical form. So after transforming it into a canonical form, it will be very easy to solve the PDE. So in our next video, we will see each type that is, first we will see learn about hyperbolic partial differential equation and then we will learn about parabolic partial differential equation and then about the elliptic par partial differential equations one by one. Thank you.